Hey everybody, welcome to part three of repairing the digital projection iVision 30. We are now at the point where we can try a lamp in it. This is a brand new lamp using the uh, is that Osram or is that Philips? That's Philips, that's Philips 317, 300, 21.8. So it's simple. You just have your uh, high voltage power connector here goes to two leads on the side of the bulb which go to the arc tube in the center has a on, focus has a dichroic coating I don't know if you can that's picking up on camera actually there you can kind of see it that prevents the UV and IR from sneaking through if you have a DLP projector uh, and you buy a replacement lamp make sure it has that coating I just pardon me one moment there's the little there we go. A little bit of schmutz I didn't like there. So anyway, lamp drops right in. Screw holes line up. These little tabs on there line up too. Push the handle down. And we'll start putting the screws in. Now don't over tighten these, there's no need to, it's just to keep the connector from sliding out, so just bring them down until they stop. You don't need to go past that, you don't need to go tighter than that, just right down until it stops turning. You don't even, sometimes you don't even need to tighten them up, I mean I always do it for safety's sake, but it's just to keep that connector in place, or that connector in place. Then the door goes on, that curved fin hits the safety interlock switch which allows the line voltage to feed the power supply. So as it stands right now this projector is ready to fire up. So let me get a power cord and we'll see what it does. Alright, we got the uh, IEC cable. Plug that in. Wait to see if the uh, Hear any bad noises, no popping, anything like that. Have our standby light, it's good. It's powered up, and uh, let's hope we hear the color wheel spin up. Actually, I'm gonna do it with the top off because I can. So, power is the far button. Oh, we got a little diagnostic light. Let me turn off that overhead. I heard the color wheel spin up. Oh, and the lamp just lit. Good sign. Now usually most projectors make sure that color wheel's spinning before they fire the lamp. It's kind of a safety thing. If that wheel sits still, that lamp could burn right through it, the heat. Or at the least, it could make it too hot, warp, something like that. So this is a good sign. Um, and all my my temporary fake screen over here, we have a nice, happy, bright digital projection on the screen. And on the wall here, <laughs> so I can show you here. Lamp timer has expired. Yeah, that little piece of paper is my screen right now until I get my new one hung. But that's fine. You get the idea. So that means I to fix this, I have to go into menu, menu, here, let's pop you out of this, this uh, stand here, see if I can do this without making a big mess, uh, flip you over, does that help, there we go, maybe you all see this right side up, I'm looking at it upside down, so let's see, Let's go to settings. What do we got here? Status, language, profile, settings, and installation. Probably installation. Let's see. Lamp. Oh, there we go. Lamp. No, not test image. Lamp. Reset lamp time. Yes. Are you sure? There we go. <laughs> yes, and reset. 
now the lamp time's reset. Let me go to the on-screen display test just to make sure the color wheel index point is in the right spot. Is that on? Off. There we go. Combined. 5 by 4, 23, 1, 16, 10, 16, 9. That looks pretty good to me. Wow, you can really see the uh, rainbowing. That's, this is because the color wheel is not synchronized with the shutter rate on my phone. That's wild. Let's see, let me get out of uh, test image altogether. Off. And let's get out of menu. All right. So I'm going to hook a source up to this just to make sure all the colors are good. Uh, when I say source, I'm going to hook up a laptop and I'm going to run some color tests to make sure they match. So let's shut it down. But this tells me the cover can go back on. Any adjustments I'll need to do will be through a service menu and not through stuff in here. So the cover can go back on and the screws can go back on. So I'm not going to bore you with the rest of that. I actually know that this is okay, um, but I'm still going to hook it up and do all that. And I'm not going to bore you with just putting a picture on the screen and going, yep, that blue looks like blue. So if you have questions or comments or whatever, leave them in the, uh, the thing below or, you know, the uh, comments thing down there. And uh, I'll get back to you. Uh, so thanks for watching. Um, and, uh, I forgot to put the screws back in the bottom of this. So, let's just set cover back on. Oops. Come on, you. Straight. There we go. Cover's back on. Flip her over. And the fans are shutting down, so I can pull the power cord. And we'll put all these big screws back in. And these are T10 Torx. Say that 100 times fast, 5 times fast isn't too bad. Oh, go back right side up. I wonder how much editing this is going to require. Yep, T10. There we go. Whoops. And being that this is a metal housing, I'm going to tighten these diagonally so that all the stresses are equal. It's kind of uh, probably unnecessary, but if you take those little seemingly pointless extra steps to just do it a little bit nicer it pays off because then when you work on something where that needs to be done and you weren't aware it's just part of your methodology so I always tried to do the crisscross tightening And uh, I will be taking this lamp back out because this is just for testing. So there you go. That's how to replace the color wheel in a digital projection. iVision 30SX Plus WXL. Thanks for watching.